So, you've built yourself an awesome seven inch quad. You've got a great frame, fantastic motors, a really good quality stack, and a perfect tune, and it flies beautifully. But, within a few seconds of taking off, you get the low battery land now warning, and the cell voltage is dropped to about three volts. So you land, check the motors, they're all nice and cool, but the battery, the battery is like a really, really hot thing. What on earth is going on? Hello, and welcome to the Whirling Bloke channel. One of my subscribers DM'd me recently with a problem. After a few quick questions, it turned out they made a classic, if totally understandable, beginner mistake. They'd picked solid and quality components for their build, good props, powerful motors, and a decent battery, but they didn't work well together. The combo was mismatched and the poor old battery was taking all the punishment. So, rather than type out a long reply, I thought I'd answer it properly in a video. So I've recreated their build using similar components that I had lying around. And this is the setup. It's an iFlight Titan DC7 frame, sort of slightly modified, with a SpeedyB F405 F4 flight stack, which is a solid bit of kit. I really love that thing. We've got Emacs Eco2 2807 1300 kV motors. These are great value, really smooth, but they've got loads and loads of torque. These props, these are Dal T7056C props, high pitch with loads of bite. And the battery, it's a GMB 1250 mAh hour 6S 130C. It's a good brand, decent condition, and it's fully charged. So on paper, everything should just work fine. Not quite. So I arm the quad, take off, and within a few seconds, battery low, land now warnings. The cell voltage drops from around 4.2 down to 3.5 volts almost instantly. So I land, touch the battery, and yeah, it's seriously hot. But the motors, they're stone cold. So try swapping out the pack, thinking maybe it wasn't fully charged, or it was just a bit tired. Same result, same warning, same old heat. Nothing's getting hot except the battery, and it really is very, very hot. So, a check of all the usual things that every video on YouTube tells me to check. Motors, nice and cool. ESC, cool. Frame, a clean build with no vibrations and nothing loose. The tune, stock seven inch beta flight, a totally flyable and tame tune. So, what's happening? Well, it turns out this is classic voltage sag. The battery simply can't keep up with the powertrain. These 2807 motors and the aggressively pitched props pull massive amps, and the 1250 mAh battery just isn't built for that kind of load. It doesn't matter if it says 130C on the label. So how do you avoid this kind of mismatch in the first place? Let's talk about how to match props, motors, ESCs and batteries and do it the right way. If you want to avoid the whole voltage sag fiasco, here's how you should match your components before you even think about firing up the soldering iron. It's all about getting your props, motors, battery and ESC working together. Step one, start with the prop size. Your frame pretty much decides your prop size, fairly obviously. For example, this seven inch frame takes seven inch props. Bigger props give more thrust and efficiency, but they also need more torque to spin. And if they're aggressively pitched, even more torque is needed. So if you're going big on props, you'll need motors that can handle them. Step two, match your motor. For seven inch props, something like this 2807 motor works well because it's got plenty of torque. On 6S, go for a lower KV, like 1300 KV, for smoother, more efficient power. But check the manufacturer motor thrust charts to see how many amps your setup might draw. Don't go guessing. 
Step three, you need to pick the right battery. Make sure that your battery can supply the amps your motor and prop combo demand. For example, if each motor can pull 30 amps, you'll need a pack that can comfortably supply 120 amps total. A 1250 mAh 6S 130C battery like this might claim to handle that, but real world performance will be borderline. More capacity means provide more headroom so you don't stress out the battery. And step four, choose an ESC that can keep up. Avoid 35 amp power capacity ESCs if you're using big motors like this. Go for 45 amp, 55 amp, and make sure it can handle burst currents, especially if you're on 6S. Match those four things properly and your quad will fly smoother, run cooler, and keep those voltage warnings far, far away. Better still, if you want to get more technical with matching your props, motors, batteries, and ESCs, I've put some links to really useful tools in the video description below, including eCalc, thrust test databases, and build calculators. They'll help you run the numbers before you commit to a setup and hopefully save your batteries from an early retirement. So what's the fix for this build? The motors and the ESCs, they're all wired in and changing now would be a real pain. But fortunately, this build can be easily fixed by simply using different props and a different battery. So first things first, Let's swap out the props. So I've taken these Dow prop aggressively pitched tri blades and I've swapped them out for these HQ props 7x3.5x3 by by V1S props. They're still tri blades, but they're much lower pitch. The result current draw is reduced, voltage doesn't nosedive, the battery comes down warm, not hot, and the flight time will increase as well. Now, you could just fly it like this, but we can do better. We need to change the battery. If you've got a few of these 1250 mAh 136S packs, you could make yourself a simple converter like this with three XT60s soldered together and run these two in parallel. And when you connect two identical 6S batteries in parallel, the voltage stays the same, it's still 6S, 22.2 volts nominal. The capacity doubles, so you've got 1250 plus 1250, which gives you 2500 milliampere hours. The C rating stays the same, but the usable amp draw doubles. The internal resistance drops, reducing the voltage sag, and battery heating is reduced because the current is shared between the two batteries. Now, if you are gonna do this, just make sure that both packs are charged to the same voltage before you plug them in. Now, if you don't want to mess about with parallel setups like this, an even better option is just use a larger battery. Something like this GMB 2200 mAh 6S 100C with a 200C burst rating. You've got more capacity, more headroom, and you avoid all that sag and heat from the start. And if you want to improve this even more, you could use biplay props like these Gemfan 7042s. They're very efficient and quiet, and with the 2807 motors, they've got very low amp draw. So you'll get great long flight times, which is good for long range, I guess, but not so good for acro. Now I'm gonna to stick to these tri-blades. Now I can actually fly the quad properly, punch outs, dives, rolls, and the OSD voltage isn't all over the place anymore. I get at least 10 minutes of flight time, and when I unplug, the packs are just warm, not cooking. Here's a quick reference guide for matching your drone's frame size with the right props, motors, battery, ESC, and voltage. Whether you're building a lightweight three inch ripper or a long range 10 inch cruiser, getting these components matched will make your quad fly better, fly longer and avoid voltage sag or overheating. Pause the video here if you want to take a closer look or just grab the downloadable spreadsheet from the description below. But remember, this is only a guide. Check your component manufacturer specs to be absolutely sure. 
So, voltage sag, hot batteries, and how to avoid both by choosing the right build components for your quad. If you found this helpful it'd be great if you gave me a like and maybe leave a comment and subscribe it really helps me out thanks for watching and i'll see you next time